So this is what $16 buys you on Amazon. Welcome to The Wiggy Woman. I am so excited to be bringing this tutorial to you today. This tutorial was actually inspired by a comment that was left on that video right there. In that video, I show a lot of tips and tricks for how to make a synthetic wig look more realistic, but I was doing it on a wig that already had a lot of features to make it easy for me. So today we are going to be doing a lot of those same tips and tricks, but we're going to be doing it on a wig that has no features. This is a wig that I purchased on Amazon for under $20. And today we're going to make this cheap Amazon wig look more expensive with just a few steps. These are tips and tricks that you can do on any synthetic wig. Some of the steps that we're going to do today are going to be unnecessary. If you have a wig that, you know, in the manufacturing process was already maybe pre-plucked or has some features that are going to make it a little bit more realistic right out of the box, but that doesn't mean that you can't de-shine it, de-poof it and do a lot of this. So you want to evaluate every single wig that you get and see if there's ways that you can improve it. Okay, so let's take a look at this wig as it looked when I first took it out of the package. And I'm gonna go through what I think are the telltale signs that this is a cheap wig. And leave me a note in the comments and let me know what you think the telltale signs of a cheap wig are. And if we don't address them in this tutorial today, who knows, it might inspire my next tutorial. So I'm looking at this wig and the first thing that I see is going to be that hairline. That hairline is not fooling anybody. It looks very, very unnatural and rigid, and it doesn't look anything like a natural hairline. Obviously, it's not a lace front, so we're gonna have to do something about that. The next thing that I notice is the shine. The shine on this wig could stop traffic. It is very, very shiny, and nobody's hair actually looks like that, right? It really looks like plastic, so we're going to de-shine this wig. And then you can also see that these fibers are very rigid and they all kind of seem to stick together. So we're gonna give some life and some body into these fibers for maybe a little bit more natural movement. And then we're going to address that part. That part is rigid and it's straight and it's completely unnatural. So we're gonna give a little bit more depth and realism to that part. All right, so I am going to show you how I started with this wig straight out of the package. I'm going to take it over to a mannequin head, but you don't really need a mannequin head to style this wig. I'm just going to use one because it makes it a little bit easier for me to film if I have my hands free. In order to widen the part, I'm going to take a pair of tweezers and I'm going to pluck individual hairs along this hairline in order to make it wider and more realistic. I want to pluck on both sides and I don't really want it to be even. I want to have some parts that are a little bit wider and some that are a little bit thinner because I want to recreate a more natural look. I'm gonna slow it down here for a second so you can see where I am now. You wanna be careful not to over pluck. It is possible to take out too much hair, but if you do, we can fix that in the next step. And now I'm gonna pluck on the other side and what I'm gonna try and do is on the areas where it was wider on the left, I wanna make it a little bit thinner on the right and vice versa so that I can create a little bit of an unbalanced part line that's not gonna be nearly as rigid as what we had before. I am brushing this throughout the process so that I can clear out those strands that I plucked so that they stay out of the way and prevent tangles. And now you'll see that this part line is definitely looking a lot wider and more natural, but we still wanna do something about that cap that's showing underneath. Since this is not a monofilament top, I'm going to recreate the look of a scalp underneath by taking some concealer and a lip brush so I have a lot of control and I'm going to go right along that area that we plucked to create the look of a scalp. I'm avoiding the strands as much as possible and just trying to get that cap underneath. Now to break up these strands, I'm going to get the crown of the hair very, very wet. I'm going to use this blow drying tool and I'm going to pull the hair away from the face. The reason that we get the hair wet is because this is not heat friendly synthetic wig. 
but a great way to style any kind of synthetic wig is using steam. So as long as the hair is very, very wet and when we're pulling it away from the face, we are retraining that plastic to go in a different direction. I'll fast forward now to having both sides been blow dried and you'll see that this has definitely got a lot more movement and body. To de-shine this wig, I'm going to be using a dry shampoo that is specially formulated for brunettes and it's going to leave a dark brown cast as opposed to a white cast that you would normally find with some of the other dry shampoos. If you wanna know how I do this in more detail, I do have another video specifically on this process. So the last thing that we need to do to make this cheap Amazon wig look way more expensive is to fix the hairline. Now, it's just not realistic to expect that for, you know, under $20 on Amazon that you're going to get a hairline that looks as good as a more expensive designer lace front cap. But if you have your own hairline that you can use to blend in with this cheap Amazon wig, it's going to look as good as a lace front. All right, so to achieve the blended hairline look, I am going to, you'll notice I put the wig on just like slightly behind my own natural hairline. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a comb and I'm gonna pull out like maybe a centimeter. I mean, just like the tiniest bit of my own natural hairline. And I'm gonna go all the way down to the ears like that. And right now I'm not super worried about the fact that my own hair doesn't match the wig exactly. I have a little bit of a trick for that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, this particular wig has like two little clips in the front. I am going to clip these down and I'm going to take that part that we created and I'm going to put it like just ever so slightly off from my own natural part, like that. You can see it's already starting to look a lot better. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scooch it like a little bit forward and I wanna take my own hair and kind of fluff it up and back and incorporate it in with this synthetic hair. Like that. So aside from the fact that the colors don't really jive too much, um, this is starting to look really good. Okay, so the last thing that I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna try and do it on camera, um, is I'm going to hit these roots with a little bit of root touch-up spray. And the cool thing about this is that it's designed to blend in with a lot of different kinds of medium brown. So I selected medium brown because that's kind of like the color of this, this wig. And so I'm going to take my hair, pull it back over the wig and try not to get too much of your forehead. And I'm gonna give it a little spritz. And then same thing over here. And just try to blend in those synthetic fibers with my own natural hair. Okay, so I'm gonna get in really close and show you. I'm going to kind of pull this away from my forehead. And give it a little bit more of a spray. Okay, like that. Now I'm gonna get in really close and show you this hairline. You'll notice that my own hairline really gives that more natural appearance, even though only like the tiniest bit is showing and that root touch-up spray blended my own hair color and the color of the wig in pretty good. Okay, so you can see that this is looking so much better than how it looked originally. The hairline matches a lot more. I've kind of recreated um, a fake hairline to kind of go with this fake wig. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to brush this out and I am definitely gonna put pressure on the crown of this wig 
because this is an inexpensive wig. It's not built like a more expensive one and it could totally get wig snatched. So I wanna just brush out the rest of this wig while it's on. And there you have it. All right, and that's it. So this is what the wig looked like before, and this is what it looks like after. Hopefully you'll agree that this cheap Amazon wig looks way more expensive after we've given it a little bit of love. I do think it's important to note that while we can make this wig look pretty good with some TLC, we're not doing anything to change the cap construction. So a more expensive wig is probably going to be built on a more stable cap. This wig really just has two clips right here and an elastic band. There's not a whole lot that's keeping this thing in place. So if you were to have a uh, more expensive wig, it probably would have more built-in features like maybe an adjustable strap or velvet ear tabs, things that are designed to keep that wig in place. This wig is also not very good for something like a wig grip band, which is my favorite thing to keep a wig in place. It's also my favorite way to avoid fine lines and wrinkles. So you can see I am not wearing a wig grip band today, but um, you know, it's definitely, you know, it's stayed on through this whole video and it's perfectly fine if you're going to be doing some light activity or maybe some photos or a video where you might not want to invest in a wig that has a lot of those expensive cap construction features. I did include a link to all the products that we used here today, including this wig right here, as well as that detox dry shampoo that is specially formulated for brunettes. And I also put a link to the Root Touch-Up Spray in medium brown, although it does come in a variety of colors. I even put a link to my favorite tweezers. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make a cheap wig look more expensive. If so, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell so that you're alerted each time a wig review or tutorial is posted weekly. If you want more tips on how to make a synthetic wig look realistic, check out that video right there or subscribe to my channel and click the bell so that you're alerted each time a wig review or tutorial is posted weekly. If you have a suggestion for another video, please leave it in the comments because I do read those comments and I absolutely use them for inspiration. Thanks for watching and I will see you next week.